Hello, I'm Pastor Joey Rogers, and I want to welcome you to another portion of the Prophecy Files update. I've recently preached this message here in the sanctuary at Pace Assembly, and I believe it is information you need to get a hold of. And not only that, but it will help you to be spiritually prepared for the days that are ahead. So let me take you right into this portion of the Prophecy File update, when the restrainer stops restraining. How many of you ever heard of Elon Musk? Elon Musk, some of you may know who it is. Uh, the Tesla cars and so forth. This brainiac has now said that we have come up and I brought this to your prophecy files several months ago now. He said he's gonna develop a chip that can be implanted inside of the brain and can help. Watch this, everything about the Antichrist system is going to be something that people embrace. It's gonna be something that helps, okay? The swiping of your card right now. If I took up an offering of cash in this building right now, it probably wouldn't be very much because most of you are not carrying cash in your pockets right now. What's the point? Everything is going to be embraced for your good and security. So Elon Musk said just this past Friday, he rolled out this new implant and there's gonna be more development now. He says, we can put this in here and it will help with patients that are dealing with seizures, maybe even Alzheimer's, all of this kind of thing to connect your brain with this one chip directly. Now the ultimate goal is actually so that you could think without getting on your computer and Google whatever it is in the massive amount of the internet and it'll be directly downloaded straight into your brain. Why am I bringing this to you? Is this the mark of the beast? No, this is not the mark of the beast. Well, what is it? It's a foreshadowing. It is steps to the technology that is already here that will be necessary in order to collect the entirety of the world under a one world government and order. This chip, it's already not only under development, but you'll be able to use your iPhone. Be a bad day if somebody, if you lost your iPhone. Or maybe you had a power failure. You don't want to be in my head right now, I can tell you. It's... So here we go. Here's another spiritual sign of the last days. Watch this. You know Gavin Newsom, one of the most liberal governors in all of the United States, has said, this is from July the 13th, we're going to shut down every church, every worship service, every home Bible study group. Furthermore, there will be no singing and no chanting whatsoever when you do collect inside of those buildings and it will be by a limited number authorized by the government. And what are the sheeple doing? Rolling right over. I want to remind you of what this incredible document of more than 230 years that the United States has been under called the Constitution says that Congress shall make no law prohibiting the free exercise of religion, nor shall they pass any law, I'm paraphrasing, or put any law into effect that would prohibit that exercise of free worship and free religion, I should say. Why is that so important? Because ladies and gentlemen, when Mr. Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, said that churches are not essential, he was effectively saying that all of your Bibles and all that kind of thing have nothing to do with what's going on. But ladies and gentlemen, it is about God. Can I tell you? And if the church doesn't stand up in this hour, we will make our own self irrelevant. And I say to you, it's time for the church to make its voice heard in this hour. If we've got faith, if we don't, then let's go to the house. But if Jesus is real, somebody ought to say, yes, Lord, I'm going to stand for you in these last days. I want to thank you, church, for more than $10,000 that we sent a few weeks ago to the Liberty Council, who is defending more than 44 pastors in multiple states right now that are literally potentially going to jail for having church services in their buildings. Let me just hit a couple of two or three of them for you. Pastor John MacArthur at Grace Community Church is facing right now a $20,000 fine from the Los Angeles County 
because of him meeting uh, in a church service. They're meeting today, and if Pastor MacArthur and the 160 plus churches in California ever get this signal from Pace Assembly, you need to know that an Assembly of God Pentecostal church tongue talking in the state of Florida in the little county of Santa Rosa is standing with you right now in prayer. This is a work of the Antichrist. Harvest Rock Church, they have been criminally charged and are facing $1,000 per day because when they got the letter from the Pasadena prosecutor, they said that, it, watch this, and all of my staff that's here and all the board and everybody else, all the members of the church, please get this. They have sued every person in the staff, all of the board, all of the church, and all of the membership for gathering in their church to worship, and they're worshiping today inside of their church in California. The God Speak Calvary Chapel is holding church services and the church is being fined every time it meets. But nothing was more touching than this video that's coming to us right now from the pastor of the North Valley Baptist Church. Roll that. Hello friends, my name is Jack Treber. I'm the pastor of the great North Valley Baptist Church in Santa Clara, California. My wife and I came here 45 years ago and. God has uh, richly blessed us, for which I'm grateful. I'm in the auditorium, the great auditorium of the people of North Valley, uh, auditorium that seats 3,000 people. Uh, God's given us a great ministry, but our ministry, like yours, has been affected over the last about 24 weeks. Uh, 24 weeks ago, we were instructed to completely shut down, and we did that. We heard of this thing that we've not heard before, COVID-19. And it entered into our society and we wanted to err on the side of safety. So we, we shut down everything. And uh, we closed down as we were instructed. It said two weeks. We closed our Christian school, K-4 through 12th grade. Uh, we closed our college that's training young men and women for the glory of God come here from all over the country and outside of the United States. Uh, we closed our bus ministry. Our bus ministry has been going throughout this entire valley for 45 years, picking up boys and girls and men and women. Uh, we just invested $1.5 million in new vehicles uh, for these young people. In 45 years, we picked up 1.5 million riders, brought them to the house of God. 24 weeks, they've not come to church. Those little children and parents literally are weeping. We'll go see them at the door. And uh, those children say, I want to come back to Sunday school. I want to come to church. And we closed down the jail ministry. We closed down the public school ministry. We have 14 rest homes we're in. We've not been in one of them. Of course, we're not allowed in, and I understand that. Uh, we have closed down door-to-door -door visitation. We're not permitted to do that in this city. All children's ministries have been closed. Our Sunday school has been closed. We have tried to obey authority. After 11 weeks of that, we have uh, still continued 24 weeks, keep it all closed. But after 11 weeks, we went back into the auditorium temporarily. I was preaching to this empty auditorium every week, every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, other times. And we did that because we wanted to err on the side of safety. Now we have come to the point where this is not a hot spot. We were told that thousands were going to die. There's 2.1 million people in our valley. I didn't want to be responsible for seeing people die because of this disease. And it is a real disease, a virus. It's very real. We understand that. But because it was going to be a hot spot, we obeyed to the letter. But now all of a sudden we have found out that there are not 5,000 or 2,500 people that have died in our area of 2.1 million. We've not had 1,000 people perish, or 900, or 800, or 700, or 500. We've not had 400 people perish. We've not had 300 people perish. And by the way, one life, we know that, is valuable. We've had to this date 224 people pass away. 90 plus of those were in rest homes. God bless those people. Died alone. 
or not able to visit them as we've not been able to get in the hospitals or anywhere these last 24 weeks. We have done everything possible. We have posted our protocol to come back in here. But yesterday, the county came in. They posted on our doors on Friday that we have to cease and desist. Those words are horrifying to me. That someone could post that a church in America has to cease. I know our mayor has, I believe, tried to be nice to us. And uh, her office has suggested that we just obey and maybe you have a First Amendment right. Well, absolutely we have a First Amendment right. You, you can't make laws against the church. We have the right to worship. But more than the right from the Constitution, we have a command from God. In the edict that came to us, we have tried to obey what's been written, the protocol. One of the things that's amazing we were cited yesterday for was that we're not permitted to sing. So yesterday morning, a fine of $5,000, and Sunday night, a fine of $5,000, and they're ratcheting everything up. This is America. Th to think that a, a person can say, you cannot sing at church. You cannot preach without a mask on. You cannot communicate with people. We tell our people they come in here. They do not congregate. We are social distancing. Every other row is empty. Six feet this way, six feet this way, six feet this way. We have them come in with masks. Many continue to wear their masks during church. But we're not allowed in our building. Now they said, Pastor, you can meet with 60 people outside. Well, we're under fires. I said to our authorities on Saturdays, I spoke, do you realize the air quality, little children and elderly? We, we can. They said, well, you can't, you, you should not probably meet this week. I can meet with 50, 60 people outside, but we can't sing. This is way out of bounds. The fines are out of bounds. And the fines that will continue for going to the house of God. We've never been bad people in this city. Every mayor that I know has always spoken complimentary of this church. We love the police and they love us. I have a letter on my desk from the chief of police, how great this church in the last two weeks have been to this area. We love the police. We love authority. Our people work. We pay taxes. We're good neighbors. We're, we're trying to do everything possible. We're trying to help poor people. We're trying to help the needy. We're trying to help the people that are sick. So we have a situation here where the county health director said, now I'm in charge of the health and God bless you. You're not elected, but God bless you. I appreciate you. But I'm in charge of the spiritual health of the people of this city in this area. And I've been trying to do it for 45 years. And though the health is very important of utmost importance, spiritual health is supreme. And because we've been locked out in this county of churches, suicide is up, domestic violence is up, drug addiction is up, homelessness is up, alcoholism is up. We need to get back to worshiping God. I am commanded to worship God. So yesterday, Acts 4 and 5, we heard their threatenings. They said, we command you not to teach or preach in this name. Here they said, we command you not to sing or speak inside a building. Look, I'll go outside. It, uh, the building's not the issue. It's telling the church what they can do. And then it's say, okay, you can go outside, but you can have only 60 people. What are we gonna do with the thousands of people that are coming? I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm not trying to be a smart aleck. I'm not trying to be cruel. I wanna obey authority, but authority you overstepped. And I plead with you, back off. Open up the spiritual environment of this valley immediately because we're going to see chaos. I'm not threatening that we're going to create chaos. If you arrested me yesterday, I would go, I'd go on, I instructed my people, no revolt. And if you arrest me this week, and I know that's a possibility, that's not my desire. My desire is to preach God's word. I thought I'd come to this part of my journey of my life and just be able to preach and love people and help people and deal with situations but I am willing to take a stand for my children and my grandchildren I have 14 grandkids 
Some of my grandkids here yesterday, they're so worried that Papa was going to be arrested. It's torment to our children in this church. I beg you, please stop. I beg you, look at the stats. Look at the science, as Mr. Governor, you say. There's not a pandemic here. Yes, let's be safe. Let's be careful. But this area needs the church. God bless each of you. Thank you for listening. And we stand with the pastor of the North Valley Baptist Church in California. Amen? I must move quickly. How did they know they were even congregating in the church? This is America. How did they know that? The Liberty Council found out that the county had sent spies into the congregation and revealed who was there. In Kansas, they want the membership list so that they can know who how to identify people that are actually showing up at church. Let me correct something. There's 162 churches, Liberty Council says, that they are representing currently in 44 states. Thousands of pastors that are being sued are threatenings that are being made. Well, that doesn't sound like America. It sounds more like this. Sounds like China to me where the Chinese government, communist government, said that you take those crosses down, and they've been taking them down now for several years. Not only that, but you're to take the images of Jesus down. Sounds like council culture here in the United States to me. And you can't worship your God. You've got to make the communist leadership and hang up a picture of Mao Zedong to be able to worship in the leadership of the communist government of China. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a very dangerous time. Here's an article that says, Americans want church, but they aren't interested in attending anymore. I told you a few moments ago that there is 80%, listen to this, 80% in this Pew survey said that churches should be subject to the same rules of being open and requiring social distance practicing as other organizations. And yet fewer than one in six adults who want their churches open say that they will attend it themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, when church people and Christians stop stop trusting and stop believing. I know there's people that are watching right now that are needing to watch online. You're high risk. I get all of that. But that is not what this is about. This is about your desire and your hunger. Listen, I've gotten phone calls and letters from our elderly senior citizens of this church that says, Pastor, we're still here. I can hear their hearts crying in the letter. We're still here. We're just watching online. We're trying to be careful. Ladies and gentlemen, when your heart and your passion is to such a degree that you're not only not going to shutter the doors of the church, but you can count on me being there. That says, God, you're first and everything else is second. Are we moving to one world religion? Absolutely. Look at this, where the Pope has now praised nuns for opening up a trans home for men, claiming them to be women. And he called all of those that had had surgeries girls. The Vatican has also called, listen carefully to this, this Vatican has called for a reset of humanity. Please keep that in your mind as we move along. Here is one of the leaders, one of the uh, commentators on CNN, Don Lemon, who claimed a few weeks ago in this article, claimed a few weeks ago that Jesus wasn't perfect. And thank God for the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas, who took that to task to make sure that everybody knew not only is Jesus perfect, but he was the only perfect man in all of history. Here's Franklin Graham saying to us that he's reflecting upon the absence of God in the DNC ahead of his DC prayer gathering. If you cannot be there physically in Washington, DC on September the 26th, I applaud the leader, Franklin Graham. His father would be extremely proud, calling a prayer meeting and a march in Washington to pray for our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, that is the remedy to fix what's going on in America. I move rapidly this morning to the signs of Israel. The signs that are happening in Israel, even as late as last night, reports coming in of activity. I want you to know Israel is the master key to Bible prophecy. Everything that we call the last days started when Israel became a nation in May 14, 1948. And what is going on? The establishment and regathering of the people. These are prophetic things. Reestablishment of the state, which the Bible says in Isaiah 66, a nation would be born in a day. And if you don't think that America has had a part with that, 
when Harry Truman signed a little 13-word statement that acknowledged the nation of Israel on May 14, 1948, the parallels of America and Israel have been running together, and the only blessing that comes is because we bless the nation of Israel. The reclaiming of the land and the revival of the language in Zach, uh, Zephaniah, these are all prophetic things that are happening. Look, the revival of language, the resurgence of the military. The refocusing on in world politics. Israel is at the forefront. Somebody could blow up a, 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 a bomb in a trash can somewhere in Indonesia and it won't make the news, but you let it happen in Israel. And it'll be the headlines out there because it's the focal point. It's the apple of God's eye and the reoccupation of Jerusalem. So in this past several weeks, we have seen one of the most unprecedented events of, of Bible prophecy even, and a peace accord with the UAE, the United Arab Emirates that took place. Is this a stunning activity of Bible prophecy? Well, let me say, because referring back to that map of Gog and Magog, the nations of the world making a peace plan, and we know that's one of and is the signature of the Antichrist coming on the scene, which is a seven-year peace plan. That is not what this is. I was on the phone call with uh, uh, the Kufi leadership along with Pastor John Hagee and him being a central part of what's going on. And because we're members of Kufi, you can know that the 8 million people that are joined together in support of Israel had a major part to play in what's going on with the peace plan between Israel and the UAE, along with other nations that are there. Pastor, could this be that peace plan of the Antichrist? It's not the peace plan of the Antichrist, but it is, a, I believe, a precursor of things that are to come. Hey, listen, one day there was no peace plan. And then later, just in a few moments, here comes this peace plan that's been being worked on now for quite some time. It's all a sign for us to be alerted in these last days. So this past week, what happened? Direct flights for the first time in 50 years from Israel and the UAE back and forth. Ambassadors, telecommunication, energy, tourism, and health care, and embassies are all being set up in these nations. Why? Because of the nation of Iran that is very mad right now at the United States and Israel, and Hezbollah is waiting for their signal to continue their activity of terrorism. A few weeks ago, Hezbollah crossed the border right where we stood with our tour group in Israel uh, at that kibbutz in the northern part of Israel and Lebanon, and they crossed through and got into Israel. It didn't take but just a few moments for the IDF to show up and drove them right back in there. As I stood and looked across into Lebanon with no windows in the multiple hundreds of homes that are there, our guide told us that in every window there is a Katusha rocket that is aimed at the nation of Israel and at this kibbutz. Over 150,000 rockets, they said, those are the ones that they have numbers to. There are more than that that are waiting for their opportunity, and Iran is pushing the whole thing. So a few weeks ago, in Iran, what took place? This next article says, a mysterious ghost attack fires an explosion that plagued inside of Iran. You didn't hear a whole lot about this, but underground explosions, and there were seven different ships in Iran that were on fire at the same time. Now, one of our friends uh, told us that if you don't hear that Israel was doing anything and you hear anything out of Israel when these kind of things take place, then rest assured, we did it. <laughs> when I looked at this article, and this is the Iranian leadership that said it's a ghost attack that's taking place. I said it's not just any ghost, it's the Holy Ghost, because that's who's guiding Israel. If you don't think that your free, speeches, free speech is being expunged today, look at this article that now Twitter has deemed as hateful imagery the Star of David. There is the expunging of, of uh, conservative thought and the anti-Semitism is rising like never before. But here's some good news out of Israel. Look at this. According to Bible prophecy, there will be a return. And the Ukrainian Jews are returning by the tens of thousands into the homeland of Israel. Let me tell you another location where the Jews are, are leaving from and going to Israel. From the United States of America in New York City. They're seeing what's taking place. The largest constituency and population of Jews in America is in New York City. And they're leaving there, going back home. Just like the Bible says. 
If you, th- if you need some cornea work done inside of your eyes, Israel has just put together a, a very special uh, cornea transplant that literally could restore sight to millions of people around the world. This is the blessing of the nation of Israel upon us and upon our children's children. Not only that, but everything's coming together for that third temple uh, that will happen during the tribulation period, but certain things have to be met. And the other day, there was someone there in Israel who has been uh, sampling and putting together the different uh, grapes for the wine that could be used in that temple in the days that are ahead. And so they've now found the ancient species of grapes that was used in the first temple that has now been revived in Hebron, and now they got one more ingredient to be able to fulfill Bible prophecy. Late, late last night, I was talking with a friend concerning the events that are going on, uh, not only here in America with our own president, but in uh, Israel. Right now, there was, last night, there was more than 20,000 people in the streets protesting at the front door of Benjamin Netanyahu's house, calling for his resignation. Half of that country is against Benjamin Netanyahu. He shut the country down to protect them from Corona, and he's also been someone who's been very key in all that's been taking place. But there's whole groups of people that are against Mr. Netanyahu. So we need to pray for that, because in your lifetime, hear what I'm about to tell you, in your lifetime, you have never seen this, and there's been plenty that have promised it. But in the recent uh, year and a half activity, this is how fast things are moving. The embassy of the United States that's been in Tel Aviv ever since I've been born and and before that has been moved into Jerusalem to signify that it is the capital city on the heels of that declared by our president and by the United States. They said, whatever you do, don't do that. It could start World War III. He went ahead and declared Jerusalem to be the capital of the state of Israel and no world war. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the blessing of God upon America because of that action. Not only that, but he gave the Golan Heights. You didn't hear a lot about that. I have stood at the Golan Heights and looked across into uh, Syria and the adjoining uh, countries and looked at the activity of bombs going off while I was standing right there. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a key piece of real estate for the protection and security of Israel. And these are all signs. Let's jump to signs in the economy quick. The book of James says that you're to weep and howl, you rich men, for you put your trust into the money and the love of money of this world, and it's going to be moth eaten and it's going to be put in bags with holes in it. Here's some important facts for you. Look at this. Here's what no cash. You've been hearing it. Pay with your card. You can't pay with check. And by the way, we've got this shortage in coins. How did that happen? I'll tell you how it happened. You got mason jars full of them that are at the house. You need to get them, bring them to the house of God, put it into an envelope and put it inside the bucket before you leave here today. Get it in the kingdom. So what's a cashless society look like? Why is that so important? Because in one hour, less than an hour, we'll be transferred into digital currency. Ladies and gentlemen, that plan's already there. I'm about to show you. What's a cashless society look like? If you're struggling in your mortgage and you can't pay your mortgage, you can't do odd jobs to get cash to be able to help with that. Your child can't go to a local farmer and get some summer cash working on the side. There'll be no more lemonade stands. There'll be no more little savings account, cash underneath the bed. All of a sudden, this is what's going to happen. In a moment, you're going to go to bed one night and your cash is going to be right there. And the next morning, you're going to get up and they're going to say, we've wiped it all out. Why? Because in 1973, Mr. Nixon took us off of the gold standard. When he took us off of the gold standard, uh, earlier than 73, when Mr. Nixon took us off of the gold standard, there's nothing that substantiates the $1, $5, $10, $100, $1,000 bill that you have in your pocket. All it is is paper. And guess how much they're printing of it today? Trillions of dollars. So what's the point? A cashless society is already in place. Here's what happens when American Airlines lays off more than 17,500 people. And that's just American Airlines. That doesn't count Delta and the other locations. What's going on? This is playing into the hands of a new world order to break the economy of the United States, the most successful capitalist society, because wherever capitalism is, Christianity is. 
This past week, of the Fed, watch this, the Fed announced Federal Reserve. It's neither, listen, the Federal Reserve is neither federal or a reserve. It's not a bank that you go down and, and, and haggle with for your mortgage. They announced a policy shift. This is important for you to get a hold of. I'm going to summarize this. They're keeping the rates, interest rates, really low. And there's a whole group of people out here that are saying, praise God, I can go get me a zero interest car, you know, 2% loan on my house, all that, I can buy this and buy that, and I've got low interest rates. And that's great for you. But for the senior citizens in here that are trying to gain some interest on their finances and 401ks and all that kind of thing, it's flatline, that kind of deal. So for the first time, the Fed has said that we're going to keep this low, even though uh, to, to try to help uh, shift the spirit of any kind of inflation. Well, ladies and gentlemen, so much money has been printed. We're already in an inflationary situation right now. Anybody still happy here? You better stay for the good part. This is the first time that they've ever done this. So what does that mean? Put it in a nutshell for you. We can no longer pay for the bonds that have been issued. Some 40%, we're at some 40% of the payback. You could not, let me put it in your language, a hundred dollar bill and you only take in less than half of that and your debt service is beyond that what does that mean sooner or later you go bankrupt you crash are you hearing what I'm saying let's go a little deeper this is one of the most important things that I could tell you this morning this just happened in June and this article comes from just this week world leaders from the World Economic Forum met in June they will meet again in January of 2021. Actually during the time of the presidential swearing in during that particular time on that weekend. And it is the who's who of all of the countries including Prince Charles and a guy by the name of Klaus Schwab. I've got to summarize this very long article but let me say to you their intention is the great reset of all humanity. Mr. Schwab said, instead of traditional capitalism, socialistic policies, wealth transfer, redistribution of wealth, regulations, massive Green New Deals, and government programs are on their agenda to put in place across the board all over the world. Every country, quote, every country from the United States to China must participate in every industry from oil and gas to tech must be transformed, the founder and the executive chairman of the World Economic Forum said. He goes on to say that all aspects, listen to this, of our society and economy must be revamped from education to social contracts and to working conditions. So the plan is clear. The world needs a massive new government program and far-reaching policies, this is from the article, that will play right into the socialist mindset of Bernie Sanders, Ms. Cortez, and the Green New Deal. Prince Charles said, we have a golden opportunity to seize something good from this crisis, meaning the corona. Its unprecedented shockwaves may well make people more receptive to big visions of change. That was said by Prince Charles. He later added, it is an opportunity we have never had before and may never have again. So what you're watching in the media and what you're hearing from here is a setup for the new world order to redistribute wealth. We've heard that term before, but ladies and gentlemen, it's coming faster than what you can ever imagine. So what does that mean? That means you go out and earn a paycheck and you bring it home and you put it in the bank. But in a socialist mindset and mentality and an environment and an economy, they take what you have and redistribute it so that everybody is equal. So the guy that doesn't do any work gets just the same amount as you do. Here was the shocking statement out of this article that really threw the flag for me. The words effectively controlled economic activity in this article. What did that mean? It is the same or the similar words that you'll find in Revelation 13 when the Antichrist comes to power. Where no one will be able to buy or sell save they have the mark or the name or the number of the beast. Controlling worldwide economy. This is a setup for the Antichrist. And in my lifetime, this is the one article that I read last night and put into this presentation to you that sent shockwaves. I've got more. 
But they're looking at the coronavirus as the opportunity to play and manipulate upon the fears of people to shift this world by a great reset. And the point is this, we now, Bernie Sanders said a few weeks ago, what we talked about years ago when socialism was not, was not welcome, but now it is mainstream. Where more than uh, the, the millennial generation embraces socialism and will vote in that direction. Well, all you've got to do is go to a socialist nation and you'll find out what socialism looks like. I'll tell you, my niece is from Venezuela. Her mom and dad are doctors in Venezuela. And what she has described to us of what is going on in Venezuela, which was the third largest economy in Central America just a short time ago, when Hugo Chavez took over and flipped it into socialism and confiscated everything, it went straight downhill. And let me just add this to you. One of the first signs that the country was going socialist in Venezuela under Hugo Chavez was they started tearing down the statues and the history of Venezuela. But I'm going to tell you, God will not be mocked. Because when Hugo Chavez stood up and said, I pronounce a curse upon Israel from my innermost being, my guts, he said in Spanish. He contracted colon cancer and died shortly after. I just want to say you, hell's going to be full of people that you don't want to be around. And this activity that's going on right here is using the COVID, this pandemic, to cause people to respond for your safety. This is the reason why you've got to be keen in the Holy Ghost. Pastor, don't you, don't you understand there's a virus and people are dying? I completely understand that. It's never more real than right now for me. But I can tell you, I will fear no evil. And if we succumb to the fears of manipulation and using that against you and the church, then ladies and gentlemen, we have lost it already. It's for your safety, they said to the Jews as they stood there waiting to get on the cattle cars to be shipped to Auschwitz. I hope that this information is a blessing to you and helping you to be an informed believer. It's so important that the Word of God is coming to you daily, building your faith, and that you stay in a mode of prayer and reaching out to those who need the gospel more than ever before. Certainly we see storm clouds on the horizon, there's no doubt about it. But there is the sun that will continue to shine. Jesus Christ is about to return. And the only thing that's going to matter is that you and your family and friends are ready to meet him when he comes. I encourage you to come back to the Pace Assembly app and to the other social media platforms where more portions of this message from the Prophecy File update will be brought to you. And until then, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.